welcome to Freeman Foundation. My name is Charlie Freeman, the founder. Here we have talks on everything from health to well-being to spirituality to music, arts and culture. I'm Bailey Lalonde, Managing Director, and today we have sound healer and meditation facilitator, Aisha Bell. Come on down, Aisha. There we go. So you seem to have a big smile on your face and you come in so full of great energy. Maybe you could start by sharing with our listeners and our viewers well, um, why this is. I am, I guess I'm living, I'd say I'm living my fullest life at the moment. So I'm getting to do my work, which is um, helping people through, helping people to transform their life into what they want their life to be. So if you are, if you're working in a supermarket and you don't want to do that anymore and you want to reach your biggest goals, helping people to achieve that, working a lot with meditation and healing and breaking old patterns of behaviour, whether it's through drinking problems or it could just be lack of self-esteem. Um, and I'm also studying to be a psychotherapist, which is something that I wanted to do since I was about 12, but I never got around to doing it. Wow. Um, I'm in my 40th year and I'm doing it, so that's quite a big thing. And it's Never uh, too late. Never too late, never too late. So yeah, something called psychosynthesis psychotherapy, which is Eastern and Western philosophy. So they cover not just the stuff that we learn over here, but they look in, a lot into meditation, um, how trauma holds in our body and how we can move it out of our body. Wow. So, That's going to go so well with your other work as a sound healer and a meditation really well. I mean, I'm facilitator. Already, I'm already intertwining it a bit. Oh, you know. Um, Obviously, I'm not fully qualified, so I can't, but there are exercises that I can use in my sessions that I've really brought in that are making a huge difference to people. And I'm getting all these amazing messages, and it isn't about me, but there is a big part of it. If you're doing work, you want to, you want to, you want to feel good, and you want to get good feedback from people. And when you've got totally. people messaging you, telling you that they, you know, they've had a life-changing experience, you kind of know you're on the right path. So Amazing. And you mentioned that you've been working with people for a variety of different issues, but mm -hmm. one being issues with alcohol yeah. use and abuse. So how's that going? Are you having some good results with people getting through yeah. that and transcending um, that? I mean, yes, because it's, I think anybody that comes to you that wants to change the way that they're living, they're actually ready to do that. I don't think you can force someone to do that. Mm -hmm. So I guess the first step comes from them, which means they're willing and they want to. So, I mean, it is, it's one of those things you can't force someone. I don't know if you've ever known any alcoholics or drug addicts. Um, you can't force someone to stop doing what they're doing until they're ready to stop. So yeah, there are, there are results. I think it's an absolute crucial step. Mm -hmm. that absolutely crucial step. You've got to want it yourself. Uh, that's why often I think people fail, is because often it's a family member or a friend yeah. who's suggested or almost coerced them to, I don't know, go to rehab, wherever it might yeah. be. And uh, unless the desire comes in t from internal, then it's, it's you know, it's you've got to work, wait until the person's ready and just. Yeah, and I think it's important to wait actually, because it, it can take different amounts of time for different people. And, and just be there. If you're there, experiencing yeah. that, I mean, there's a certain someone. amount of patience that can only last so yeah. long, but I think being fairly patient is quite crucial. How do your clients come to you in the first place out of interest? They, where am I getting them from? So I've been teaching, so I started off my journey teaching yoga, um, and I've always worked with charities like homeless people. Um, I think my first stint working with addicts and stuff was working in a men's hostel about. 15 years ago, so men that had lost their jobs or become, they'd split up with their wives and normally it goes, it doesn't go very well for men if they, you know, if the home breaks up, they normally have to move out, they get the raw deal, they have to pay for everything, move out and some men can't handle it, you only hear about, you know, the people that are still paying the maintenance, some people get breakdowns and stuff, so I'd say the beginning of my journey started with helping people like that, so coaching, um, and then that's grown, and then, then the, the yoga came. So with the experience of doing that already, when I'm teaching yoga, people just tend to gravitate towards you, and they ask you what you do, and then you can sort of extend that out, and then before you know it, you've got a good client base. So it's more word of mouth than anything else. Amazing. When did you introduce the sound healing into your, into your work? Only 18 months ago. No way. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. God, it was, you seem so masterful at it. Yeah, I promised myself it was, well, I mean, I used to be a big raver, so sound and music <laughs> is like, um, I mean, I still am, I, I love my dancing, but sound and music is, it's a therapy. So, you know, meditation isn't just 
closing your eyes and trying to quiet your mind. Meditation could be riding a bike. It could be mm. just being in a zone and dancing. Mindful. It's that point where you're not thinking and, you, and you're completely you know, at your highest point of yourself. So for me, I found that a lot through dance is my little space. Yeah, funny enough, I found it when I was painting. I started yeah, painting exactly. almost as a hobby, but I found yeah. it so meditative. It it's the same as when somewhere. I play the guitar, because you're just not, you're so focused on the creativity of the moment that your, your mind is just not doing its usual mm -hmm. monkey mind. Yeah, monkey the monkey the mind. The monkey yeah. mind, <laughs> yeah. So now do you do more one-on-one -on -one type of coaching? I've in been the doing time? more one-on-one. -on -one. And I've got, I've got fewer classes because I also started a business um, during the last lockdown that we had, where obviously we everything was online, and when you're using gongs and singing bowls, the sound gets lost and you know it gets loud and then it breaks out on Zoom or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I started to pre-record everything because I had you know my clients messaging me saying, is there anything, could they recommend anything? So I was sending them to, I listen to a lot of stuff myself daily. I'm listening to different speakers, some more recent ones, some from as far back as the 1920s. And it's, it's the wow. same stuff regurgitated. Is it no really? one's saying anything new. You know, the secret was written way before the secret was written. That kind of mentality in yes. terms of thinking, you know, you manifest your own reality, whether that be material or just the way you live your life. Um, and I forgot what I was saying, business, sorry. Mm -hmm. And so through the lockdown, when everybody was sort of messaging, saying they couldn't, they didn't know how to, you know, I was directing them and I thought I can actually record my own meditation, sorry. And I put together little gift boxes that contain all the things that I would use. So, you know, there's candles, there are your teas um, and downloading yes, meditations. Yes, I saw that yeah. uh, advertised on Instagram page. Yeah. Which is a lovely page, by the way, full of um, every day, full of nice, yeah, nice encouraging things, words you. and, you know, yeah, little which, gifts to people every day. Which takes me some time, so I've actually stopped doing that for a little while. Now. Have you? Uh, only for, I, I only for the that. last few weeks, yeah. so I've given okay. myself a little Instagram break. Cause, Fair Because you really, um, you know, you care. You, I'm not just posting random no, stuff I'm thinking about it. No, I can tell you it's very it. obvious, it comes across very and clearly. So, and then you don't just want to post for the sake of posting, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, but exactly. um, so yes, yeah, so I've been working on that, and that's going quite well. And again, it's another—it's a beautiful thing for me. Um, I recorded a New Year's meditation yesterday, and Amazing. and the response that you get from people that are receiving these gift boxes, the emails that you're getting back, that it's genuinely helping people. I mean, it's a no-brainer, really, isn't it? If you can bring that kind of light to people's lives, it's um, well. When you help others, you help yourself, don't mm -hmm. you? Service work, they say, is the, most, yeah. is the key to happiness. Yeah. Exactly. So how did you get into this sort of line of work? How did I? By, I guess kind of by accident, in a way. I mean, it's always something I've wanted to do, not this specifically, but I've always wanted to help people, shall we say. Hence, always like, you know, working with homeless people, feeding, like making loads of food and taking it, trying to help people, you know, sort out their... Uh, paperwork, people, if you're homeless you can't get uh, accommodation because you don't have an address and there's that circle. So trying to help local people, because you do, you know, if you're passing the same guy every day, at some point you're probably going to say hello. I mean, I'm quite open to talking to everybody anyway. Not everybody does. Some people can't handle it because maybe it's too much. Um, so it's always an area that I've wanted to work in in terms of like healing and service. But actually the transitional point was when I moved to East London unexpectedly and then found a really, really good yoga teacher um, mm. because I wasn't really that into yoga before. I thought it was quite boring. And I found a really, because <laughs> it is quite boring actually if you don't have a good teacher because <laughs> it's slow. And if you're used to, you know, we want things now, don't we? So mm. um, you need that kind of, you need someone to bring it up, bring it up, you know? And I found a good teacher and then I decided to train and then that kind of unraveled whole world and also I used to go to India quite a lot as well but I never ever did any yoga there I refused to do it because I thought it was just full of lots of yoga hippies <laughs> which have now kind of become one of them <laughs> yeah interesting to bring it up because I've often that's something we really trying to dispel here at the Freeman Foundation mm. is this kind of common uh, what's the right word assumption that people make people who are spiritual or whatever and it yeah. sounds like you had that I did. To a certain degree as I well. Did, and we're yeah. quite fearful of it. Yeah. Because you think it's me bongo bashing, incense burning. Well, it kind of is, though. But it actually right? is, but it's not. It is, but it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd like to hear from, you know, 
in your words, how you transcended that mm -hmm. and, and, and what the world of spirituality and well-being kind of actually means to you in kind of layman's terms and everyday terms, because we're, we're trying to appeal to the to, every to, man. Which is my, bit, well, you think you're, it's my client base, is, you know, yeah. it's the, your normal, well, not that the other people are not normal, but your, your person that still goes to the pub and has a drink. Exactly. Or, the person that is and a, that a person corporate. probably thinks that if they become a spiritual, they can't like, and have a drink anymore. Well, yeah, I Whereas did. of course they, of course they can. Or, or people will look down on you within that, you know, within that group. Exactly, but I think yeah. that the the people that are truly, truly authentic with that kind of work, there is no room for judgment. You're not really looking at people like that. You just want everybody to be able to experience it the best they can, and to take totally. the best they can, and to offer the best they can, but without. Uh, pigeonholing anybody or judging anybody or stopping from anybody from being who they want to be because that's not um, that's not healing work. Yeah. I agree. I think it, for me, spirituality is a journey to your best self yeah. and to your truth. And if your truth is going to have a drink in a pub, then embrace it. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with yeah, that. There's nothing, exactly. wrong with, there's nothing wrong with anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As long as you're not hurting anybody, obviously. Exactly. Of course. Um, so. We do often ask this at this particular time of the year, or this year, because it's been a strange year, obviously, it with has, the lockdown, yeah. the pandemic. Um, you've obviously grown a lot and got a lot from it because you've had a lot of time to help others. Mm -hmm. Have you seen some people really struggling with it um, and yeah. suffering with it? And have you found that there's any people you've been unable to help or you haven't had access to be able to help them? Or I've had some, it's, it, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I've, some people have really been struggling and I think the hardest thing is, is that in normal circumstances, I'm talking about people that I'm dealing with on Zoom and stuff, some people just need a hug, which sounds so mm. basic, but if you've got someone alone who's oh. living alone and genuinely isn't really seeing anybody, um, so tough. that's been the toughest thing, I think, and I've had a few people like that, it's a, bit, a combination of friends and clients. Um, where, like I said, for me, it hasn't been such a tough time. Um, but then when you, you know, the reality is, is a really tough time for some people. So I think that, that, that you know, this craving for physical contact and physical, um, what's the word? Interaction. Connection. Connection. Interaction. Connection. And connection. Yeah. Um, you, you just don't get that on Zoom. And I think that's the hardest thing. And also, you know, I've had a, f a few friends that have moved to the country and it's been great, but they're isolated again and you know the loss of jobs but the only bit of hope that you can give people is that nothing ever stays the same anyway yeah. um, and that's really nothing does stay the same mm. whether it's good or bad so this will pass this too shall pass yeah exactly yes. do you have any we like to ask the guests to have some kind of like take a take home tool for the listeners that they could implement from their home, even in self isolation, where they are to work on maybe yeah, their I mental mean, health or spiritual health. It's such a basic um, one, and it's it 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 feels funny breathing <laughs> that we do all the time, um, but a lot of us don't breathe properly. I definitely didn't breathe properly, and so still, even though I work with you know I do breath work and stuff, there are times I catch myself holding my breath. Um, so how would somebody breathe properly for anybody it, who doesn't quite know? Breathing what to do? properly is trying to breathe. So there it's breathing, just breathing deep into your stomach. So breathing so for roughly a count of four and just exhaling out for a count of four and trying not to breathe too much into your chest and shoulders. But something I've been recently doing, I've got a very good friend mm. um, called Dr. Voice who is a wonderful voice, voice coach, has worked with some, some great people. Um, he taught me, but it's something I know already, but he explained it in a really good way. And he's, he does this every hour, and you just place the tongue at the top of your, the roof of your mouth, and you inhale, really imagine you have a plunger on your tummy. So as you inhale, your stomach becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you just exhale and it goes all the way in. And you want to do that through your nose, but not closing your mouth. So you're just only breathing through your nose and just really trying to keep it in your tummy. So really push your tummy out and back in. 
and you do that 100 times an hour, which sounds <laughs> ridiculous. It doesn't take that long. It's going to be, but it's going to be sort of eight into 10 minutes of your hour or so. But if you can try to, you won't remember to do it every hour. But what it does is it creates a little chemical, nitrous oxide, which gives you, I mean, it's not meant to give you a slight buzz, but it gives you a lifting feeling. And it also works in all your organs. Um, so, yeah, it's a nice little exercise. You just do it a few times, you can sense yeah, the relaxation it's, of it. Yeah, it's and amazing. And the calming effect it has on yeah. the whole body. So just really pumping your tummy up yeah. and back down again, but just breathing through your nose. Cool. Nice, That's I love great. that. Thank you so much yeah. for that. Yeah, conscious thank you, breathing. Dr. Voice. Cool. Conscious breathing. Yeah, and are amazing. there any other kind of tips that are just right in the forefront of your brain that you'd like to share with the listeners? Yeah, before you go to bed, I think a long time ago, if you were ever, if you were brought up in a religious home or went to a religious school, you would have been told to say your prayers. Um, saying prayers are very much the same as saying thank you for all the things you have and it doesn't need to be a prayer to you know in a religious sense but just before you go to bed every night just go through the things that you're grateful for whether it be your friends your family the fact that you can walk and talk the fact that you manage to get through the day um, that does wonders and then in the morning when you wake up the same thing again yeah it's a great energy to give out to the universe isn't it yeah and it, and it works. And it yeah. just reminds you, you know, you could be really anxious and stressed, but if you just take a second to think about all the, the good things, then I kind of think it makes everything okay. Um, Aisha's also going to be coming here to do um, sound healings in the future, so keep an eye on the website for that. Um, and she's available for one-to-one -one coaching as well, aren't yeah. you? So we'll, we'll provide all the contact details to this. Thank you, Charlie. Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you.